person in the mirror. Years ago, I had a learning experience at UCLA that totally changed the way I looked at my career and has dramatically influenced my life. I was in a class with old Dr. Bob Tannenbaum, and he was a highly respected man at the time, had written the uh, most widely read article ever in the Harvard Business Review. He was a full professor. He was kind of the guru. And I was in a group of 11 people, and we were doing something they used to refer to as encounter groups. We were talking about all kinds of whatever we want to talk about, and we'd kind of analyze things. And I was talking about people in Los Angeles. And the gist of my conversation was, for three weeks, people in Los Angeles are so screwed up. When they drive around in those yellow Rolls Royces, and they wear $85 sequin blue jeans, and they're plastic and materialistic, these people are so screwed up. Now, of course, I'm from Valley Station, Kentucky, which must have qualified me to be the world's authority on all people in Los Angeles. After about three weeks of my babbling about people in Los Angeles, old Dr. Tannenbaum looks at me and he says, Marshall, who are you talking to? Well, I thought about it and I said, well, I guess I'm talking to the group. He said, who in the group are you talking to? I said, I guess I'm talking to everybody. He said, I don't know if you know this, Marshall, but every time you've spoken, you've looked at only one person, and you seem interested in the opinion of only one person. You seem to be listening to only one person. Who, who is that one person? Well, I thought about it, and I said, that's an interesting comment, Dr. Tannenbaum. That'd be you. He said, well, you know, there are 10 other people here in the room. Why me? Well, you know how it is when you start digging a hole and you don't want to stop. Just dig a little more. I said, Dr. Tannenbaum, you know, I think a person with your great educational background can understand the true significance of what I'm saying and understand how screwed up it is just to run around and try to impress people all the time. Old Dr. Tannenbaum looked at me, he scratched his beard, and he says, you know, Marshall, is there any chance that for the last three weeks, all you've been doing is trying to impress me? I said, well, no. I said, Dr. Tannenbaum, I'm very disappointed. Well, I think you've missed the significance of everything I've just told you. I've been pointing out how screwed up it is to try to impress others. That's not what I do. He looked at me and he goes, I think I understand. I look around the room, I see these 10 other heads going like this. I hated old Dr. Tannenbaum's guts for about six months. After six months, you know what I said? Thank you, Dr. Tannenbaum, sir. You just taught me a good lesson about life. Well, you know what I learned? It's very easy to see what we don't like about ourselves in other people. It's a little harder to see what we don't like about ourselves in the mirror. And sometimes other people can see things in us that we don't want to see in ourselves. And when that happens, our first reaction is, you're wrong, you're confused. Well, basically, this is what I do for a living. Every day in my job as an executive coach, I give people feedback. I let them know how everybody sees them. And sometimes they're just like me. Their first reaction when they get that feedback they don't wanna hear is, well, they're confused and they're wrong. Well, I always go back to my story with Dr. Tannenbaum. When people tell us something we don't want to hear, our first reaction is they're wrong and they're confused. Sometimes it's hard to look in that mirror and say, you know what, maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm confused. What did I learn? Sometimes other people can see something in us we can't see in ourselves and our first reaction is they're confused. A great challenge, learn to listen to other people. Hear what they have to say and recognize sometimes they can see something in us that we don't want to see in ourselves.